guys so in today's episode i want to do a deep dive into the dark waters to explore the basics but yet prevalent threats that occur in the realm of fishing so if you're new here make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon for more content like this and to stay tuned with ht and the ace so what exactly is fishing in a recent research report from cardiff school of technologies it was defined as and i'll let my deep fake voice take over from here a socio-technical attack in which the attacker targets specific valuables by exploiting an existing vulnerability to pass a specific threat via a selected medium into the victim's system and utilize in social engineering tricks or some other techniques to convince the victim into taking a specific uh, action that causes various types of damages. Scary good, isn't it? And that's just scratching the surface in terms of what is available in terms of AI voice deep fake manipulation. There is quite a few elements there to unpack, but some key words to point out at this point were that these threats are targeted, which could also mean a kind of speared attack. You are selected either from a R people's page, an open source directory, or just blind, unfortunate luck. There's also an element of trickery involved, which plays on the human side of what you believe to be honest. And again, being convinced or deceived is another part of this social engineering is not just what you can see on the screen is what you believe to be true and ultimately this can cause you damage in either reputational damage financial loss damage or damage to your mental health and well-being but still it begs the question what are the motives behind such an attack well it's simple when you boil it down it's an equation of money and power. Now, speaking of power, we have to refer to the great and now passed away French philosopher Michel Foucault, which I've kind of spliced together in terms of how he references power and my interpretation of fishing. Now, I would call these outcomes tolerable only on the condition that the fish can mask a substantial part of itself. Meaning, the facade of the fish can only work if it's believed, and that's where the social engineering aspects kick in. So it's no surprise then that fishing is the most common hacking technique, with a recent survey showing 90% of corporate security breaches are a result of phishing attack. Now I personally have seen rubbish quality phishing attacks and phishing attacks that have used cloning to further enhance the quality of the fish now there are different type of phishing attacks if you're unaware of them you have your typical email phishing which is when a bad actor registers a fake domain to mimic a genuine organization most commonly this could be a government agency amazon or ebay are the most obvious ones uh, next, we have spear phishing attacks. Um, kind of mentioned this earlier, but this describes when a malicious email is sent to a direct person and you're identified by either your name, your job title, an email address on, like I said, a register or a directory or specific information about your job type. Now, next up the scale, we have whaling or whale phishing. Now, this is an even more targeted attack and it aims at normally mds ceos or execs and the end goal here is for the whale in this case to click on a fake or malicious url and try and hook them in that way to divulge some information next and a kind of more modern threat type is smishing or phishing now both are quite similar uh, telephones are replaced with emails as a method of its communication. Smishing kind of involves when the bad actor is sending text messages and phishing involves a telephone communication. Now the most common 
smishing pretexts are messages supposedly from either your bank account or a government agency or more modernly a missed delivery which has embedded in it a malicious url which you would then click look like a fake page of said delivery company for example and then you would fill in your details and essentially the fish is complete lastly we have anglia fishing which is relatively new attack vector and social media offers several ways for a criminal to trick people in now the fake urls or clone websites posts and tweets instagram messages etc can all be used to persuade people to divulge sensitive information and again download malware this is usually posted on say someone's image on instagram or a post or a link within like a facebook comment and then that goes on to like i mentioned a malicious way for a bad actor to obtain more information from yourself so what constitutes a phishing attack and what does this look like now at this point i want to tread with caution because if you're an og in day one to the channel you would know i've already been given a strike from youtube for let's say giving up the goods as it were now if you want to see some real <laughs> you can head over and join the discord on ht and enter the plus membership where we can discuss this in further depths so i'll give you only the broad brush strokes to make you firstly aware and educated about the situation at hand and in part demonstrate some instances of what a successful phishing attempt or attack can look like provide you some tips of how to maintain your safety and thereby preventing you falling victim or prey to such scammers scenario one now then as mentioned in terms of practicality the first example i want to show you would be the spear phishing attack now where this comes from and how it looks depends on the client service provider in this instance i'm going to try it on my gmail account and if we go into the inbox it's not appeared in the inbox but if we go into the spam folder we can see here a email sent today from steve jobs r.i.p the great man now we can see here the subject title is youtube fish test steve jobs now if we click into this we obviously got the be careful we can it looks safe to me obviously it don't but we can approve just for example here and got a basic message you can see here it's from steve jobs at apple.com and that's what it could basically look like in terms of a phishing attack now then the second tool i want to demonstrate is a phishing toolkit z fisher in this example and what that can potentially show is the fake landing pages which i refer to in terms of the whale attacks so this essentially will look like a legitimate landing page of some kind but at the same time harvest information if entered and report that back to a central console so let's take a look how that is set up in real time now then we have the framework available to us and i'll provide just a screenshot of what that looks like on the screen now now essentially this is a new revision of what used to be used quite often by bad actors which was ngrok now this is a powerful tool and still is for various malicious activities it primarily was used to expose local servers behind firewalls um, and that itself is a huge concept probably dedicated to its own video but essentially exposes your local servers to the public internet by creating what's called a secure channel now you can understand how this could be misused uh, to bypass network security measures in terms of gaining remote access setting up and spinning up c2 frameworks botnet infrastructure 
malware distribution, the list goes on. Back to the issue at hand for this one, it's kind of evolved past Ngrog and it's using a mixture of Cloudflare or CDN technology and certain dependencies like Local Exposed. So for this example, we're going to pick on Discord because it's so heavily used right now anyway. Now, like I mentioned, it gives you three options here. We either have the local host option, a Cloudflare option, or the local expose option. So let us test it on the Cloudflare version. And here we can see we are asked to create a custom port. We don't need to, but we can if we wanted to. Now, by default, it uses port 8080, which is good for HTTP, for HTTP. And now we can mask the URL even further once it has created it. I would say no for now, but essentially it uses Tinyfy or TinyURL to mask that URL. Now we have the URL available to us in three different forms nonetheless. In three different forms, nonetheless, we have a favor confusion, which gives us the Cloudflare base. We have an is.gd, which is kind of like an obfuscated version of the URL. And we have another version of that as well. So now if we open up the browser and we go to the link in question, now we can see what appears to be, at least on the face of it, a Discord website for us to enter our email address and password with a QR code to boot. Now, if we were to inspect this element, bearing in mind, most people will run for the hills when they see this, but we're not most people out here. When we go into the console and the sources we can see first of all the styling of this page which of course is if it's been scraped accurately it would mimic and mirror what has been done officially but if we go into this login html now this is where it gets interesting we can see some reference here to a fake discord with a m IT license it obviously says this is a fake page to demonstrate how phishing works so there's already a nod to the open source developer on that front to show you that this is just for educational purposes and how a scrape actually does work so that's one way to determine it the other way is obviously to look at this URL and although the site is secure in terms of it being a Cloudflare kind of spin-off, what is not secure is once you enter your data into this field. So if we give that a go, so if we say penace and the password is obviously the best in the world, and then we hit login, what do you think will happen? Instantly, we are redirected to the official Discord URL. Now, in that split second of redirection and you not paying attention, your details and credentials have been taken already. You've been fished. And it literally is that quick because if we head back over to our attacking machine, we can see that, first of all, a victim IP has been found. Secondly, some logins have been found. And as mentioned here, the logins were the ones that I used in the fake login page. Conclusion. Now, that was the ACES take on modern phishing techniques that are currently around and ones that you should be aware of now as we saw phishing attacks are a serious and common threat and it's an ever-changing landscape but with a bit of caution and knowledge you can protect yourself we saw that you should look at the url we saw that if you can you should be inspecting elements looking at sources looking at 
dodgy source code you should always check the sender of the emails you should always verify the dns and who it's to if you're unsure always follow up with a phone call someone real to talk to at the end of the line always remember to verify before you trust and when in doubt reach out like i said directly to a verified contact for that information that was today's video i hope you found it useful please give a thumbs up like and share subscribe stay safe in the cyberspace peace out